All right, guys, as you can see, I got a little impatient. Uh, I was having to, last night, I was having to choke up some uh, fumes off these ammo cans because I didn't have my ventilation installed. And I had been waiting on the flange to come in, but I got a little impatient and decided tonight I had some leftover wood. So the, all that leftover that I had from that second sheet of plywood, I made it to use. And uh, I have created the duct uh, air extraction system that I had envisioned. And to my surprise, it actually works exactly the way I intended for it to. So stick around for just a minute and I'm gonna move the camera over here and kind of walk you through what's going on. And we're gonna go take a look on the inside of the machine, on the inside of the enclosure. I've got one of the cans running now. And the good news is I can stand right here beside it and I'm not smelling anything noxious. My nose isn't running, my eyes aren't burning. And so that's a good day. But stick around for just a minute and I'm gonna move the camera and kind of walk you through this uh, redneck build we got over here. All right guys, there it is right there. Uh, just to give you a, a brief uh, kind of, uh, I guess, walkthrough of what I've got going on. Uh, this board here, this top board, the rest of these I glued because it is gonna be for air and I wanted to make sure any cracks uh, didn't, didn't leak air or allow air to be pulled in. My little cheap fan, I, I can't say that it's the manufacturer's fault, guys, because in, in the, the, the mess that was me trying to build this, I was using it to test fit and I didn't realize that the cord was around my foot and so it kind of fell and hit the ground. And after I got it installed, I noticed a slight air blowing out of this crack right here where the seam, where the two pieces go together. And, I, and like I said, I'm not gonna blame that on the manufacturer because I didn't have it connected until after it had bounced off the concrete. So that very well could have been me. But the good news is the fan with the duct system, the way I've got it put together, it is providing adequate uh, exhaust to keep the smell down. I mean, I can't, I cannot smell it. And, and then last night, guys, even with the lid shut, I got to noticing this morning or earlier when I was working on it, I actually had a little bit of like smoke soot around the crack right here uh, where the lid goes. But what this is, and I'm gonna get, let me get a smaller ruler. What this is, is this is just some scrap pieces of the wood. And, and basically what I have done is I've built a little box. And this box goes from the front of the machine all the way to about two inches from the back. And the reason it doesn't go all the way to the back is because that's where uh, my power wire, my air assist, and the USB cable come into the enclosure. I've got a, like a half inch hole back there that I put in it to uh, allow those guys to come into the machine. And so, what I did is I raised this up three quarters of an inch to get it above the flooring inside there and made this box and put it on there. Now the box is two inches wide and it should be right here, a little over three inches tall. So it's like three and a half inches tall, this box is. Uh, and this is just an empty tube basically, but it's built out of wood and it goes over to this box. That fan right there, uh, I used the laser and some of that really stubborn Luon that I have to make this piece because I wanted to cut that hole and I don't have a hole saw big enough to, to cut a four inch uh, hole. And so I actually, this piece here is actually laser cut as well as my little, uh, little dress up piece there for that nasty looking hole I had to cut in the wall with this reciprocating saw. So both of those are the same piece, I just, I took that one on the bandsaw and cut it in half right here and then put it up there around the hose after I got it in place, put a screw in it to hold it to where the pieces are together. But this piece here, I actually cut on the laser. Uh, the fan came with the, the mounting capabilities to mount here and I just had to make the measurements work out so that it would stick down inside this box because there's a flange that comes off of that, probably sticks down another inch and a half or two inches. Uh, and then it pulls air in from this box which creates negative pressure in the box. And there's a, there's a, a slot that's like a one inch wide, probably four inches long on this box here 
that connects to this box. And so my negative pressure goes into here and I have holes drilled into the enclosure here, 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 all the way to the back. And those holes are uh, approximately half inch holes and they go into the enclosure, but I raised them up off of the floor a little bit so they wouldn't be sucking in small pieces of wood and debris and stuff. So let me move the camera and I'll show you what it looks like on the inside, but I, I do have a job going in here. Whew, now you can smell it guys. Ugh, that stuff's stout. So I'm gonna try to get it down where you can see it. Uh, right behind the uh, rail there, you can see the holes right above those screws in the back back there. And they run the entire length of the, the enclosure from back to front. And like I said, those are just little half inch holes I drilled with a paddle bit. And they, came, they come out inside that box that I have built on the outside. And the reason I went with this design is because if you remember in my other machine, there's a false bottom in my other machine. And so I lost about an inch or two of my, my depth. And I didn't want to do that with this machine because this is my tall item machine. And so I decided to go with the uh, ductwork approach. And I'm gonna close that because it's getting, it's getting loud in here now, guys. Whew. But it works and that's what I was after. But anyway, guys, uh, I worked on that. I, I, I really don't apologize again for not having a whole lot to go over tonight. Uh, I worked on a uh, epoxy build that I'm doing, and I would love to share that thing with you guys, but it's a surprise for a fellow that's retiring, and uh, I, I will give you some details. It's, if you remember the engrave that I did on that piece of mahogany, uh, they had a lake on it, I poured it in blue epoxy, and then I did a, a logo on it, and did a real deep engrave on the logo, and then I put some text on it, did a really deep engrave on the text, and I went back and backfilled all that with epoxy. And after I backfilled it, so I have since put two additional coats of painted on epoxy on it, and sanded it down both times, and man, that thing, it, it looks awesome. Uh, hopefully, once this thing is presented, I'll get the, uh, the the customer to bring me some photos of it, or maybe you know let me do a pic let me do a video of it before he takes it, and then just release it after it's been given away. But that thing is awesome. Uh, I've been trying to get my wife to let me uh, engrave our kitchen table that I built uh, about a year or so ago, and she's been really skeptical about letting me do that. And she came out here a little while ago and saw that piece. And so now, after seeing that piece and how that turned out, I actually have the green light to engrave my wide oak kitchen table that I built and, uh, and epoxy it the same as I did this thing. Now, if I'm gonna get time to do that, is, that's, that's, that's the question, because I stay way too busy. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to update you on that, guys. Like I said, not a whole lot to talk about. I had some pretty good feedback on the ammo cans. I had some people asking me why I didn't take the lids off. Uh, I had some people saying that I could have Cerakoted them, which actually is a really good idea. Uh, but the, one of the reasons I didn't is because this was kind of a budget job that I'm doing. It's a customer that I do a lot of stuff for and they didn't want to spend a whole lot of money on these things. And to Cerakote these entire ammo cans, I mean, I'd probably burn through a, a, a substantial amount of Cerakote or Cerakote, Ceramark. But, uh, but you know, that, that is an option for the future. Uh, I've got three of them done. I got one more on here, and then I got a, a few more sitting over there that I got to do. I'm going to let them run. I'm working on some designs for uh, some other stuff that uh, will probably be in the Etsy store before long. And so I'm probably going to sit here and work on those while this runs, now that I can actually sit here. Because, guys, last night, I'm serious, I had, I had the awfulest headache before I left out of here. That's probably not healthy for all you healthy, you know, health-conscious folks. But even with the lid shut, it was overcoming the box and it was coming out the cracks and it was just awful. Uh, so I am glad to have some negative pressure in there now and I can't smell the ammo cans and that's, that's a really good thing. Uh, so if, if you have any questions or whatever guys, like I said, that's just an Amazon four inch fan. It's nothing special, it's nothing fancy. I went on there and found the, uh, you know, one of the cheaper four inch fans I could find and the uh, four inch duct was, uh, I don't remember if it came with it or if it was just one of those, you know how Amazon will, hey, if you get this, you might need this. It may have been a recommended buy, 
but all it is is one of those aluminum foil like dryer duct type deals and it came with the clamps and I bought it originally to use with this machine but I'm, I'm so happy with the setup that I've got I didn't want to change it and so I just kind of stuck it over there in storage and now that I've got the second machine I decided that I would give it a go and try that approach. Uh, that fan is quieter than my shop vac. I'll give it that. And so I'm going to try that and run it for a while and see how it works. But, but I, I did like, I, I don't like the single point of extraction on the smoke. I, I do think that if the, the only draft in the box is in the very back, that it's, if, if you're engraving up here, it's going to drag that smoke all the way across the engrave. This is primarily going to be my engraving machine. I don't plan on doing any cutting with the 10 watt. That's, that's what the 20 is for. This is just simply gonna be my engraving machine. And if I'm doing a cut and engrave, more than likely I'll do it with a 20 watt. But I've got so many settings and so many files set up for the 10 watt for engraving, such as portraits and pictures and stuff like that, that I, I didn't wanna see those go to waste. So I've kind of task specific built this thing out for engraving. That's why it's got the, uh, it's actually got four of the leg extensions. I borrowed a couple from this machine to lift it up for the ammo cans. And I'm working on a design of being able to lift uh, the bed rather than having to take the legs off of the machine to do uh, more engraves. The only downside I've got to that is I can't use my jigs if I do, and I'm, I, I'm not happy with that. So I'm having a really really work on how to do this and keep the uh, consistency that I have now. But uh, let's see if that can's ready or not. It may not, it may be done. Yeah, that one's done. So, but I got these, I got these going pretty well. And like I said, guys, I'm, I'm happy with the, I'm happy with the enclosure so far. It, uh, it worked out nice. I was a little, uh, little concerned with having to build another one because you know, I had high hopes with my other machine and the way that I built that one. And I was afraid I was going to disappoint myself if I veered from my original build. But uh, it turned out pretty good. Uh, let me give me just a second. Let me let me go ahead and start this next one. I, I make my customers text me exactly how they want things worded. And so I have to go in here and look and make sure I'm doing it right. So... The next one is gonna be, just confirming. All right. So, and that's all you gotta do guys. You just change the text and hit start. That's what I like about my jig setup. It's what I like about my using the uh, return to home. It's nice. But anyway, uh, that's it for right now, guys. If you got any more questions, like I said, I've been sitting here answering a few questions too while I was waiting on this thing to finish. But I wanted to share my, my new turbocharged uh, enclosure with you. Uh, I, I think we could officially stamp this as a tactical, cre uh, tactical creation. Uh, it works well, does what it's supposed to do. Did it on a budget, uh, all total. You know, you're looking at probably $200 with the fan and everything included. So I think I've done pretty well. But anyway. Thanks for stopping by, guys, and I'll try to come up with some more content. I've got a couple of things that I want to do. I've had some people ask me about the, the 20 watt as compared to the 10 watt as far as clarity. Uh, and I've also had some people ask me about the limit switches on the 20 watt and how consistent the, uh, the home is on the 20 watt with the limit switches. Now, I really can't testify to that because, like I said, I don't, I, I don't trust the limit switches either. Uh, I, what I do is I've got mine now. I used to run X1, Y1, but I've kind of pushed that up to X, like X3, Y3 now, just to stay way away from those limit switches because I have noticed that when I home the, the 20 watt, it, it goes and it's kind of a, it's, it's almost a little bit of a rebound. And it, it may be consistent. It may be the same every time, but it just concerns me that there might be room for inconsistency there. And so I'm just, for now, I'm sticking with on my first layout, I jig it up, I put me a, uh, I do me a tool line for a frame, I frame it, make sure it's accurate. Once I get the frame the way I want it, I burn it. When I burn it, it returns to X3, Y3. I replace the object, hit start, it burns again, repeat, repeat, repeat. 
So the only time I really have to frame is that very first cycle of whatever it is I'm doing. And, and I, I like that, I like that method better. So, you know, that may be something you're interested in. If it is, I got plenty of videos that shows you how I do it. But uh, if, if, if it's not, then, I mean, like I said, everybody, everybody has their own way of doing it. And you can, you can do my way or you can do a totally different way. It doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is at the end of the day, are you happy with what you're doing? And if you're not, then, you know, try new things. But if you are, then keep doing what you're doing. But anyway, guys, uh, have a good one. I'm going to try to get out of here a little early tonight. And uh, until next time, stay safe.